certain people. Uh, well, the thought process when elected officials couldn't help us get out of the circumstances what we were in, what they told us we had to go get, we had to go in a shelter, and, and, and there was no other provisions to give us any direction, and I and I didn't understand that Live, coming from this city, this world, mm -mm. And, and 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 knowing that there's a real God that that knew that He was going to focus me in the right direction, I wouldn't buy buy or subscribe into none of that negativity. So you feel like these mentors really helped you a lot. Oh, so totally. you understand the importance of mentor. mentorship yes. with yes. the young people, and you have things in place. Mm -hmm. for people to be mentored, yes. right? If well, I have, um, I, I'm vice president of one of the largest youth organizations in the country. It's called Youth Step USA. We use the art of performance, which is the stepping, which is an art form that they use um, that dates back to the days of the fraternities and sororities and the colleges. And it's, um, you know, it's a routine marching steps and, and dancing com combination. And they like this. And by having them engaged in that, we can get their, we've gotten their attention. And we've had over 20,000 kids come through our program. We mentor, we do step clinics, we go out into different cities, and we hold competitions. But we, once we got them, we have the opportunity to talk to them at that point. And, and you have to participate in our programs in order to be able to get in our shows. That's amazing. So it's kind of like you have this, well, good ulterior well, pie, pie, motive. Pie, pie, pie. Right, pie, pie, right, pie, pie, right. Pie, pie, exactly. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Yeah. So it's a, you said it's like a dance. It's a dance routine, you know, which is dated back to Africa, um, where you just use your hands and feet to create music, musical um, uh, sounds. Uh, and it's a lot of intricacies tied to it, um, acrobats, a lot of stuff tied into that one component. And they get to show off, you know, and yeah. they get the bragging rights of um, saying, okay, my school or my team won. And they get trophies and they get cash prizes, but they still have to participate in our mentoring programs. They get to feel important, yes. but at the same time, they're learning life they learn. skills that are going to take yes. them, right? And then how important is vision? Well, the, the other component tied to that also is that they get to have that camaraderie with their teammates. So they're understanding what it is to work together. Oh, that's good. And that's what helps, you know, focus that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So for, again, focusing back to the gangs, mm -hmm. if there's a parent watching who feels that they're, maybe it's a single mom and she's saying, my, my son is in a gang and I don't know how to help him, what would you say? Call the National Action Network. <laughs> we have a, a number of uh, chapters throughout the country. Yeah. Um, and throughout we help the country. Throughout the country. We have over 60 chapters. Um, our leadership is awesome. Um, and we, we do the best that we can with regards to social justice, civil justice, and at the same time, community outreach. Um, our programmings, we have a fantastic youth organization structure in place now. We hold a youth huddle every Wednesday. What are the ages? Um, it's actually, I, I believe, and don't get me wrong, I believe we start as early as eight up till at least 21. I think wow. something to that effect. That's yes. wonderful. Yes, we, we don't say no to anybody. Wow, that's really, yeah. really great. You know, I just think it's fantastic what you're doing. 60, yeah. you said... Over 60? Over 60 chapters. <laughs> you know, all that courtesy of Reverend Al Sharpton, who, you know, had the vision to follow in the footsteps of Martin Luther King. And, and I was happy to be invited and asked to take on that leadership role. Um, and we have several organizations. We have the, um, I'm also the chair of the NYCHA um, NAACP Civic Engagement Committee citywide. So I do a lot of stuff with the housing developments. And my other organization is Advocates Without Borders. We go everywhere. And we do whatever we can to advocate to help people. I love it. You don't say no to anybody. Thank you so much Thank for you. being with us today. Thank it was such so a much. pleasure having you. you. You're watching Join Our Town. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Parenting is tough. Come on. It's not a big deal. When your kids argue with you, have trouble in school, or don't follow your instructions, it can be frustrating. When your kids have more serious behavior problems, drinking or using drugs, fighting, running away, it's easy to let anger get in the way of finding solutions. You will know how severe I don't, this ha I don't have time to come with you. But you don't have to lose your cool. The next time your kid's behavior makes you feel like melting down, pick up the phone and call the Boys Town National Hotline at 800-448-3000. Trained counselors are available 24-7 to listen, provide advice, and help with problems big or small, so no parent has to go it alone. Keep your cool, keep it together, and keep your family strong. The Boys Town National Hotline. Winston! Just one more inning, Grandma! Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. 
So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Lisa Boldo, and in this sec segment, we're talking about gangs, but we're focusing on prevention and keeping all our young people from going down the path of gangs here in New York City. And we're joined by Kenyon Jones, co-founder and president of the Exodus 100. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So, Kenyon, how has your definition of gangs, or how has the definition of gangs changed in recent years? I think the definition of gangs uh, changed in recent years uh, just because when you hear gang, automatically is there's a negative connotation. Uh, with gang. Um, the definition of gang pretty much means a group of people. But when we hear the definition of gangs, you know, as somebody who's not in a gang or a person that wasn't involved in that type of lifestyle, automatically is something negative, from, you know, from the start. Absolutely. I know I would think that way too, right? You think, Absolutely. But really, it's just a, a group of people. Right. It could be four people walking down the street, right? Absolutely. So describe some of the differences or similarities between informal gangs and formal gangs? Well, an informal gang would be a group of people who are just going out to have a good time. You know, a group of friends, you know, they're going out to, uh, to a party or an event, family can be together. A formal gang is a, a group of kids or a group of individuals who have uh, evil intent in mm -hmm. mind, and their plan is to go out and commit a crime, so to speak. Are, is there a lot of um, strategic planning in the formal gangs? Absolutely. I would, I would say, you know, not being a, a person that's familiar with gangs myself, but just growing up in, in, a, in an inner city neighborhood, there's definitely uh, some strategy in order to be a, a part of a gang. I think a lot of times um, people underestimate the power of gangs because they don't understand that it is so strategic. And, um, you know, it, there is a plan to actually, you know, get something done. And mm -hmm. if there's no strategy, then that plan will not be able to move forward. Is, do you find that um, leaders of gangs are usually older, or can they be younger? It just, it really doesn't, you know, it could be any age. Well, I mean, I, I think the, the, the reality of what the leader does is the leader is the manipulator. Mm. So that's the person who's able to control mentally without necessarily having to inflict physical harm. Uh, that leader can be someone who's younger or older. You know, maturity comes with, you know, not necessarily age, but with the acceptance of responsibility. So we know that when, you know, a person is in that leadership position, uh, it's not so much an age thing. It's more so that person may be the strongest person mentally and they're able to control and kind of puppet master, if you will, mm. um, everything that's going on. They're having that influence Absolutely. on everybody. Absolutely. Wow. So talk about some of the issues in kids' lives that would cause them to feel like they want to be a part of the gang and even go and commit violent crimes. Well, one of the reasons why kids join gangs is because they want to belong. You know, as, as children, we all want to fit in. Yeah. We want to be, you know, part of a group. You know, so one of the reasons why they get involved is because they, they want that family feeling and that family connection. And sometimes because they may not have that family feeling or that connection at home, uh, they're willing to do anything just mm -hmm. to belong. And it's very sad. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you feel like sometimes they would just do anything to get it? Because Absolutely. Because they feel so rejected that if these people are making them feel, you know, um, accepted. Right. Wow. So do, is that... Is that more of a deception? I mean, it's, it's one of the greatest deceptions, yeah. you know, that we know about. I think um, just because you, you want to belong, um, you're willing to, to go to the limit just to be involved. And I think as a child, you don't really fully understand the magnitude of what that means right. when you get involved. So you just say, well, if this is what it takes, then I'll do it, not knowing that you know, it can be something devastating. Even if you really don't want to do it, but you're like, all right. Absolutely. Me. Yeah, and then it gets easier, Absolutely. I guess, to, right? How does the community need to get involved when it comes to helping people to steer clear of these wrong paths? 
Well, one of the things that the community can easily do is, you know, have an outlet. I think a lot of times kids are involved in games because there is no other outlet. For me personally, um, I was always a part of sports teams. Uh -huh. So growing up in an inner city community where every distraction you can think of is available, um, I wasn't necessarily a street kid. I wasn't, you know, a tough guy, uh, so to speak. But I was very athletic, and because I was athletic, I was able to find, you know, where I fit in, ah. you know, and because I was able to find where I fit in, and I wound up being pretty good at sports. That was my connection. So kids who aren't athletically inclined or may not be the smartest kids in school, you know, that self-esteem is low, and they feel like, man, I want to be a part of something, so even if it's something negative as a gang, at least I know this is where I fit in. How important do you think it is to help a young person figure out what their gifting is or what they're good at so that they can maybe, you know, for example, like do what you did? I think it's paramount. I think um, the, the younger the better. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, but kids are not exposed to, you know, other avenues. So to be able to help them see what their gift is, uh, is it's a life changer. Yeah. How can someone approach um, someone that they think might or is in a gang um, to maybe try to help them to get out of it? Well, one of the things you have to understand is that when you're approaching somebody to get them out of a gang, you have to have an outlet for them to go into. Uh, you know, you good. have to have that. So if you're saying, come out of this gang, okay, that's good and fine, but where am I going to go? Yeah. You know, so do you have a place? Do you have references? Do you have resources? Do you have something set up that when I leave this gang, which is really my only family, so to speak, do you have a place for me to go? And is that place going to help me to stay focused so that I don't have to come back to this place that you're taking me from? Do, are there resources like that available here in New York City? Absolutely. I, there, I mean, there's several resources. I think the problem is that, you know, there's, there's not enough uh, energy, you know, promoting the resources that are available, you know, and a lot of times because of, you know, just being unaware, you know, people don't know that there's so many avenues out there to, you know, keep a, a child off the streets in, in gangs. So do you know of any in particular? Uh, well, I mean, I, I know about my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I definitely know about my organization, uh, the Exodus 100. Uh, how we got started, uh, we pretty much, you know, myself and my partner, Andre Coleman, uh, we're both from inner city neighborhoods. Uh, we both uh, grew up in, you know, similar uh, backgrounds. And so we know, you know, a lot of the, the, the areas of struggle that kids have. Mm. So, you know, for me personally, I feel it's incumbent upon me to, to go back into the community that I was raised in. So I raised my hand and said, you know what, I will dedicate my life to providing an outlet for youth, you know, no matter what. Do you have kids? I do have kids. I have three daughters. Wow, that's wonderful. So, yeah, because I was going to ask you, you know, what is it that fueled your passion for this? Well, I, I, I can honestly say that my passion was, was definitely fueled by athletics. You know, growing ah. up in the inner city, uh, I felt like the way that I can provide for my family was through athletics. And as I got older, went through high school, college, and uh, also played, you know, after college, I realized that maybe basketball is not the way that I would provide. So uh, I know that I'm, you know, intelligent enough to be able to come up with a solution to provide an outlet for uh, the kids in that community. Yeah, so talk about more about the Exodus 100 and what exactly do you do and what programs do you provide for people? Absolutely. Well, the Exodus 100, first and foremost, is an idea. Um, our goal is to empower, encourage, and inspire youth to realize their dreams, achieve their goals, and transform their communities worldwide. So one of the ways we do that is we have a group of uh, people in our personal network who are all from different backgrounds, uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, as well as ethnicities and uh, various careers. And we'll have them come out and speak to the kids that we work with. And by kids being able to see this vast group of individuals from so many different backgrounds speaking to them, what it does is one, it empowers them, it encourages them, and it inspires them. But two, uh, what it does is that it gives them an opportunity to say, you know what, maybe there are uh, more careers than just a few careers out there. And if I'm not athletic or I may not be the smartest person in the world, because these individuals have, you know, decided to speak to me today, now they're, they're giving me permission to dream bigger than what I can even see. Is there a certain age range that you, that you work with? Yes, the age range is uh, 8 to 18. 
8 to 18. Yeah, so pretty, you know, big group. So we usually break the kids up from 8 to 10 and then 10 to 13 and then from 13 to 18. Do you sometimes have people that have been in gangs that come and listen to your speakers and then their lives are transformed? Uh, right now, we, we have a couple kids who, you know, have been involved in gangs, uh, so to speak. And, um, you know, we, we do have people that come out and speak to, to our kids. We have a couple of adults who are actually former gang members wow. as well that uh, have volunteered their time just to come out and, and share, you know, their experiences about why they shouldn't be involved in that type of lifestyle. Have you seen some real life transformations through what you're doing? Absolutely. We've been very fortunate to uh, see some transformation through some of the kids that we work with. We have a... Uh, uh, I was going to say a success story? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a Which couple is? kids that, that we're working with out in, in the Westchester area. And, um, you know, they, they've been in, in a string of trouble, um, you know, for most of their lives. And uh, by us being able to come in and talk to them, you know, just something as simple as us being there has provided them hope that, you know, they can see themselves doing something greater, yeah. you know. So, you know, just being around and, and being available and being able to uh, be accessible via email, telephone call, or even, you know, present physically uh, has helped. And, you know, kids are, you know, feeling like they have some hope. Do you find that most people who are involved in gangs, a lot of times they don't maybe have a father figure in their oh, life? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you, look at, if you look at the connection between guys or, you know, young ladies who are in gangs, most of the time there's no male presence and there's no father figure in their lives. And um, so that definitely uh, happens. It happens. Do you find a lot of females in gangs as well? Uh, well, I mean, some. Not as much right. as, you know, the males, but there are some females who do join gangs just because they want to belong. So these three youngsters from Westchester, were they all friends? Were they in a gang together? No, these or? are all separate, separate oh. uh, uh, children. They all had different uh, cases. Some of them were, you know, Bloods, Crips or, um, you know, different from a different gang. And um, what we just did, we provided them an outlet, you know, and, and we were able to talk to them and just really just verbalize that there is an opportunity, but you have to be willing to change. And one thing that we do, we never try to make it seem like, you know, we're going to save, you know, a kid. You know, we provide them an opportunity, we provide them an outlet, and then we tell them very upfront that you have to be willing to change. And it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life, but if you're willing, then you'll, you'll be able to do it. So basically, you're laying before them a choice. Absolutely. But you provide for them all the reasons and all the, oh my gosh, that's so good because Thank you. you're not taking all the responsibility. Absolutely not. But you're putting it on them, but you're opening their eyes to something that they didn't consider before. Absolutely. That's so good. Absolutely. So if, say, for example, if someone is watching right now, maybe a parent of someone, you know, a, a single mom, she knows her son's in a gang, she doesn't know how to help him. Right. What does she do? Well, one thing, Mom, hang in there, um, because uh, we all go through changes uh, as, as children growing up. Uh, but definitely, you know, provide, you know, the children an in, in, in opportunity to see something different and, and to be around something different. And, and what we provide at the Exodus is that we provide, you know, kids an opportunity to hope. So even if that means, you know, uh, multiple uh, people who are successful in careers that we never even heard of, you know, just that hope alone is enough to give a kid a chance to say, maybe I don't need to go this route. And maybe the mom can check out your website, see what's happening, events. Absolutely, absolutely. And invite, www and invite her <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for watching Joy in Our Town, and we will see you next time. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. This is the Trinity Broadcasting Network. From coast to coast.
tacos and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let every nation rejoice. Praise the Lord with one mighty voice. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. To Central and South America. Parts of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from New York City as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. to the degree where people are now fighting, people are now pushing one another through doors and windows just so that they might be able to have a gift in this Thanksgiving Christmas season. All of us understand that as we are a part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, God has given us more than we deserve. God has blessed us more than we deserve. God keeps on blessing us over and over and yet we continue to ask God for more. I think it is appropriate for us to continue to ask God for more. But the reality is all of us need to check ourselves, see how much God has already given to us. And when we understand how much God has already given to us, we find ourselves in a position where we are able to do extraordinary work not only for ourselves, but also to do extraordinary things for God. Once we realize who God is and what God has done for us, we ought to be celebrating almost every moment of our lives. Waking up in the morning is a blessing from the Lord. Having a job is a blessing from the Lord. Having food on your table is a blessing from the Lord. An opportunity to be somebody that somebody never thought you would be is a blessing from the Lord. Many of us know that the only way that we have been able to survive and to be sustained in the midst of all that we've had to go through, only it is only because we dare to believe God, trust God, and honor God for what he has already done and believe God is about to do something greater in our lives. All of us have gone through our struggles. All of us have had suffering in our life. Many of us have had illness. Some of us have had disappointments. Some of us have had broken relationships. We've had many things to happen in our life. But for those of us who believe in God, who believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who has given his life for us, the one who is the righteous of God, has shown us that in the midst of all of this, if God is with us, we cannot be destroyed, neither can we be defeated. We don't have to get up early in the morning trying to get to the front of the line, God will determine what place you have in the line. And God sometimes will take you from the back, put you in the front, just so that you can know that you didn't do it all by yourself. You're talking about the great job you have. You're talking about all the wonderful things that you've been able to accumulate in your life. One thing you forget many times is that it all happened because of who God is. 
and because of God's righteousness. He didn't, he didn't say that you deserved it. He just gave it to you just because he loved you enough to believe that if he gave you something, you would not only thank him for it, but you would also thank him for that which is yet to come on the promises. God is good. I say God is good. Any witnesses that God is good this morning? Somebody say amen. Amen. God is good. God has kept his word all the way from the beginning until now. His word to the Moses, his word to the prophets, and his words to us in this generation in which we live. As we study and read the Bible, we come to conclusions that brings us to a place that helps us to fully understand and appreciate what the righteousness of God is all about. It's really not about how many suits we have, how many dresses you have, not how many pair of shoes you have. It's really about how you feel inwardly about the presence of the Lord in your life. Because it is the presence of the Lord in your life that helps to guide you out of the way of doing something that is deleterious and destructive to your future. Sometimes you've had to think about something that could have happened in your life that did not happen in your life, and it did not happen simply because of the righteousness of God. God made a decision to protect you. God made a decision out of his love to give you what is promised in the law so that you might be able to live your best life. Some of us need to understand that all that we talk about who we are, as much as we talk about who we are and what we do, it's really not all about us. It's about the power that helps us to do it. And many forget to give honor to God because he's the one that blesses us. We take credit for it ourselves. And if we're not careful, we find ourselves getting into situations where we cannot get out of them. And the only way you get out is you understand that God is the problem solver and God will make a way out of some way and make a way out of it somehow. He will open a door for you. He will find a way that you can turn. He will guide and direct you to a place that you don't even know exists. He will lift you higher than you ever thought you could go. He comes time and time again, and when God shows up, God comes, and he comes and blesses our life. Witnesses in the house would have to testify to the fact that God does not make promises that he then negates. He makes promises and he delivers on his promises. We know that God is good. And I have heard it so many times, God is good. What does God is good mean to you? When you say God is good, what does it really mean to you? Do you really think about all of the goodness of God? All that God has given to you, not because you deserve it, not because you merit it, just because he is the righteous of God and because he is righteous, he wants you to have everything that he has created on this earth for you. If it is for you, God will give it to you. And if God gives it to you, you ought not be celebrating the stores with sales. You ought to be celebrating the God who gave it to you without you having to pay for it. God is good. I say God is good. And God is blessing us so much, hallelujah, sometimes we forget about God. Sometimes we forget that this happened because of the Lord. When you were down, you called on God. When things in your life were so twisted and messed up, and you did not know how you were going to get out of your situation, you called on God. And then the minute God delivered on a promise, you ran off and forgot about who made the promise become a reality in your life. We forget God so often until those moments in our lives when we are trembling, when we're in pain, when we're hurt, when we don't know what to do, we don't know who to go to, we don't know whether the doctor can solve our problem or not. We don't know whether or not we ought to be looking for a shrink because our minds are just so messed up. We don't know what we're going to do, how we're going to get through this situation. The mess in our lives has brought us to a point where we're ready to give up and believe in some instances that we should not live any longer. But God, but God, but God, God is so merciful. 
God is so merciful that he sees you in your need and then God blesses you and gives you what you need and thank God sometimes he gives you more than you need. He keeps on blessing you not because you are great but because of his greatness his hands on everything his heart and his mind is on you and he wants to give you everything you need in order for you to be sustained and in order for you to survive in a world that is trying to grind you up and spit you out God loves you touch somebody tell them God loves you I don't know what you're going through I don't know what kind of aches you have I don't know whether you've been to the doctor I don't know whether you're losing your job but one thing I do know is that God's promise will be fulfilled. I don't know when it will happen, but I do believe it will happen. And the reason I believe it will happen, because he's done it before, he can surely do it again. He's God all by himself. Give God a mighty high praise in the house this morning. You ought to be thanking God every single second of your life. God is good to those who trust him. Hallelujah. Come on, we need to get right with God. They used to sing a little song where I grew up and say, get right with God and do it now. There are too many folk who are procrastinating. They are trying to wait on something. You don't have to procrastinate. You don't have to wait. Ask God right now and watch what God begins to do in your life. You got a blessing waiting for you at home. You got a blessing waiting for you on your job. You got a blessing waiting for you on your table. They said you didn't have any food to eat and here you are in a place where you are eating and you are praising and you are thanking God and somebody is sitting on the outside saying, it don't take all of that. You need to tell somebody, you don't know my God. If you knew my God, you would understand that it takes him and when he shows up, everything in your life begins to change if there's a witness in the house a believer in the house has God blessed your life in a way that you did not anticipate nor expect has God given you blessings that you did not expect to have has God showed up over and over and time and time again and each time God shows up he blesses you more than he blessed you the last time and you got the nerve to turn your back on God and tell your children you don't have to go to church get them breaths out of the bed take them to the place where you learn how to depend on God because the day is coming when they will also have to depend on the righteousness of God he loves me when nobody else loves me. he loves me when nobody else loves me no sense in you getting mad about folk who get mad about you. No sense in you getting mad about folk who get jealous because of what you have. You tell them if you know the God that I know, if you know the Christ that I know, if you know his standards, if you know his goodness, if you know of his kindness, you will understand that what I am is because of who God is. And if it were not for who God is, all of the folk in the world making promises on what they are going to give to you, and suddenly you're disappointed because when you expected it, it did not happen. But the God I serve will always show up. And when God shows up, he's always on time. And when God shows up on time, something's got to happen. I say something's got to happen. That's why you don't wait till you get to church on a Sunday morning to start praising God. You got these little praises that you do on Sunday. You want to have quiet praise. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you've been through what I've been through, I can't keep my praise to myself. 
I don't have quiet praise except when I'm by myself. But I've discovered that there's no such thing as pride, quiet praise. Because when I'm in my car, or when I'm in the restroom, or when I'm in the bedroom, I feel the presence of the Lord. And when God is with me, nobody can destroy me. No enemy can take me out. I don't deserve what God gives me, but he keeps on blessing me over and over and over again. I believe in the righteousness of God. I've had headaches, I've had pains, I've had hurts, I've had disappointments, I've had situations where I didn't know how I would get out of them. But I thank God, long as I got King Jesus, I know that my freedom is coming sooner or later. After a while, he may not come when I want him, but when he shows up, he's always on time. Somebody say he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I don't care how big the problem. I don't care how difficult the struggle. Jesus is willing to sacrifice himself that you might be blessed. You ought to shout hallelujah because you did not do for yourself what God has done for you. He is God. I say he is God. And hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus who made the sacrifice that lets us understand that he loves us so much that he would give himself that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Anybody in here know that you, everybody in here know that you got more now than you ever had before. So why are you spending your time talking about what God hasn't done for you? You ought to be celebrating what you know God did for you. You didn't have a car walking around barefooted, didn't know where you were going, crazy out of your mind, drunk with liquor in your system, and you trying to figure out what God hasn't done for you. If it had not been for the Lord, you'd still be messed up. You You'd still be drunk. You'd still be without a job. You'd still be without a family. But because Jesus is the righteousness of God, he looked over your sins. He looked over your faults. He knew you had done wrong, but he did not dismiss you because he's your friend. When nobody else befriends you, Jesus will. If there's a witness in the house who knows that Jesus Jesus will stick closer to you than a brother or a sister. He doesn't come begging anything from you. All he wants from you is to give life back your life back to him. Everything in the past, he writes it off the record. You don't have to worry about somebody pulling your record and finding out what you did in the past. You ought to be celebrating with thanksgiving that God has taken me beyond my past. I've done some stuff. I declare I plead guilty because I know it was wrong, but I did it anyhow. Everybody in here has done some wrong things, but thank God. I say thank God by the righteousness of God. He is fair with you even if you haven't been fair with him. You know who he is. And if you believe in him, he'll make ways out of no ways. He will take you to places that you never thought you would go. He will heal you in your sickness. He will bless you in ways that you've never been blessed. Anybody in here know that there's nobody can bless you like the Lord. There is nobody can do for you what Jesus can. There is nobody who can take your sins away. There is nobody who can move you 
out of the place of sin and shamefulness. You need to understand that Jesus is Jesus. He doesn't need permission to save you. He doesn't need permission to turn you in another direction. He doesn't need permission. I don't care what the theologians say. You better listen to Jesus because I have a, I'm a living witness from a seminary I went to. The theologian that was teaching us theology was one of the craziest persons I ever met in my life. Here he is telling us that God doesn't, didn't exist, that Jesus didn't exist. I said, listen to me preachers on the front row. He said that God doesn't exist. But I came to let you know, I'm glad that I broke out of that place because I realized that what I was being taught there was not giving me what I needed to be a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God calls you, I say when God calls you to do something, God will deliver you to the place you need to be in order that he might bring you to levels of success that you never ever dreamt, that you never ever thought about, places where you thought you'd never go. Jesus is everywhere. Touch somebody, tell them Jesus is everywhere. You can't hide from him because he'll find you and he will bless you. Hallelujah. In the moments of condemnation, when folk are putting you down, when folk are talking down, and folk are trying to destroy you, you need to understand that if you truly believe in Jesus, he will show up and he'll always show up on time. And when Jesus shows up, I declare to you, that's good news time. Touch your neighbor one more time and you won't have to do it again. Say neighbor, when Jesus shows up, that's good news time. The devil can't beat him. The devil cannot put him out. The devil can't shift him. The devil can't move him. The devil can't take him away. If he comes, he comes to bless you. And he blesses you so much that you cannot help but gain confidence in him. What the world couldn't do for you, Jesus could. What the world couldn't give to you, Jesus could. The joy you were looking for, Jesus gave it to you. He taught you, hallelujah, to honor him and not be dishonorable. He taught you how not to be deceitful. He taught you how to live according to the power of the word. He made it possible for you to forgive and to forget. He made it possible for you to love the Lord in every situation. Jesus is bigger than any other thing in the whole wide world. He is Jesus all by himself. Hallelujah. You think you're big? You're only big because Jesus is with you and Jesus is blessing you. You know how many things that you're guilty of. You know all the things that you've done that were adverse to God. But thanks be to God, he loves you so much that he gave you an opportunity. And your opportunity is to come before him and to repent. Hallelujah. All you need to do is repent. Call on the name of Jesus. Tell him what you've done. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. He may not come when you want him, but I said he will answer by and by. He will do what only he can do. There's no earthly power that can do what Jesus can do. Even when doctors give up, when Jesus shows up, something happens. Is there a witness in the house? I say when doctors give up, 
Jesus shows up and there's something about Jesus that makes all the difference in the world. You thought it was over. You thought you were gone. You didn't expect to see the living ground again. But thanks be to God, when he showed up, he blessed you and he helped you to understand that he's been with you all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody can love you like Jesus. I say nobody can love you like Jesus. I say nobody can love you like Jesus. The Bible says God made him to be sin for us. That in him we are the righteousness of God. Somebody say righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. Everybody say we are the righteousness of God. Every day, every hour every week every month we are the righteousness of God Monday through Friday Saturday and Sunday we are the righteousness of God we are not wasting time by being in worship but we are glorifying God for the free gift that he has given unto us we are here for a celebration I say we are here for a celebration I don't care about folk saying you preach too loud you preach too long you preach too 